we had all planned to go to the movie the next, the next day, probably the next day I was going to take the test. And I said, I didn't want to miss this, you know, this movie. And she didn't say anything. She said, the choice was yours. You can take the test with the possibility of going into an acceleration program, accelerated program, for so-called gifted and talented students, or you can go to the movie. So, um, I think I went back and told her the next day that I was going to take the test. I was calling Uncle Tom by uh, Wally Hall. He was a columnist for a um, uh, the Evening Sun, which is defunct. Uh, I mean, I was furious, and I called the newspaper for allowing him to use. The, I told him you wouldn't have not allowed them any columnist to make that reference to a white person, and he retracted it. And, and since then. Uh, after he's seen, you know, the full, you know, w the, the full range of what has taken place, I, he realizes he makes, you know, he's made a mistake. And one of the things I told uh, friends of mine, that if you're a leader, you have to have a vision. You have to be focused on, and you have to be able to take uh, risk. I mean, I knew where I was going. I knew what the expectation, and, and my value system was grounded in the fact that education was important to my community and that black youngsters can learn at a high level, every one of them. Here was this big university outside of Baltimore City and no black students, because I got hired during the summer. So I assumed that they had a lot of black students so I could at least feel my need of educating a, a uh, significant minority presence and playing a role in their lives, I end up organizing with another colleague who was hired as a counselor, the UMBC Black Faculty, Black Caucus of Faculty and Staff. The bus from Baltimore City went about a mile away from the campus, uh, so no black students, were, unless you had a car, were I ever going to get to the campus? Uh, we changed that. It was just unbelievable. Number two, they weren't even recruiting in Baltimore City Public Schools. They were all they were doing it in the county. We changed that, and we only changed all of these things when we organized the caucus to uh, bring about these changes. Our schools were clearly failing our children, and people were just sitting back, accepting it. And once I became chairman of the budget committee, the appropriations committee, started raising very serious questions about their performance. I, I was able to coach, before I became chairman, I was able to raise money, because the school system said they wouldn't use the money, to have a very comprehensive management audit done. The management audit was so revealing. And then uh, we tried to get the school system to implement the recommendations, and they were resistant. Uh, the outcome of all of this was Senate Bill 795 and a court, a state and federal court consent decree that reformed in the most comprehensive way in the country, the uh, school system, and we, we're making progress. I mean, something that very few people thought would take place. Uh, now I might be one of the one and only in the country. Um, and it's not a difficult job. I mean, I, the thing that always amazes me, when I was raised in the projects, there are a lot of black boys who I was raised with who could be doing this job. It is clear to me who are brighter than I am, uh, who have the capacity. Uh, I just had a path and met a group of black people who uplifted me, who um, inspired me, and more than anything else, had high expectations of me. 
you know, the, the thing that I'm proudest of when I go talk to people, uh, I've been married to the same woman for 40, 40 years. We've had a very good partnership. Uh, it's not been perfect. I don't know any partnerships that are perfect. Uh, but it's been a good partnership. And we've raised three extraordinary children. So that's the, I mean, the real, the proudest thing. Uh, and, and the second would be my work in higher education. A lot of that I achieved as a non-politician.